what did Kosa people sing before they were made into what they are? Because now we are singing about the mines and Johannesburg and being cold because the family split apart. So what was the song before this song was made into the dust that it is? Because that's not a song, truly. Mm -hmm. That's just dust. Mm -hmm. It's a melancholy song. It's not historic. It's, it's just a lamentation. Mm -hmm. So Unplugged, I think, for me, for, for men, what are the things that we need to unplug as a people? And if it sits oddly with some people, I hope they'll find peace in their hearts to forgive the words. But truth is truth. When when words don't hurt, mm. for me, I always say mm, there's an element of truth because truth hurts and that's why truth liberates. Mm. Now, I think the first thing we need to unplug as a people mm. is that Christianity is spirituality. Christianity is religion. Mm. It has never been spirituality. It's religion. And Africans never had religion, we had spirituality. The two don't meet and the two are not the same. Um, as I showed, spirituality is based on nature. So in spirituality, we are part of nature and nature is in us. Now Christianity comes and rearrange that and call it an anemic belief system. They even put the word belief. But you only believe because you have limited knowledge. Has it ever struck you? Yeah. Come, let me show you, baby. Just stand. Now I'm going to ask you to close your eyes. Sit where you were sitting with your eyes. Uh -uh. Okay. <laughs> close your eyes. Now sit where you were sitting. Sit down. Now open them. Did you believe that this will support you? Or you knew that it will support you? I knew it was support Because you have the full knowledge of it. It's a chair. Now, you only believe when you have limited knowledge, and that's religion. Because religion loves you when you have limited knowledge, so they can manipulate you. So they can start selling you dogmas and doctrines. That's what the Catholic Church did, by the way, during the Dark Ages. They can start selling you heaven and you buy masses for 12 months of the year because a soul is being cleaned somewhere, but the, the church is getting rich at your benefit. You have limited knowledge. Now, spirituality does not have faith or a belief system. It's spirituality. You just know. I know that when I kill a lion, I'll get the skin and the skin will warm me. But I know that when I put that skin here and I call my ancestors, I shall get the answer. Marcos. So in spirituality, that's why when there's no rain, we call the rain maidens, the rain boys, the rain queens, whoever is making rain in that society. They climb a mountain, Goko. Even if they are there for six months, one thing is assured though, the day they come down that mountain, they come down with rain. So in spirituality, we don't pray for rain and hope God will make his mind and give us rain. We fetch rain. The two are not the same. So in spirituality, you use the science that you were given and you use the nature that you know to fetch rain, not to pray for rain and wait for it fundamental difference now we have been remade as a people so much that this continent is going nowhere cape to cairo morocco to madagascar it's nothing but deprivation and poverty and corruption because you've hooked a people on a false hope that if they pray the answer will come so we have been taken away from people who are active in their own deliverance into a people who now wait upon a pastor and a bishop and a pope and a male god to make up their minds to deliver you. That mm -hmm. religion, I, spirituality has seven ganjal. In spirituality, if you have the amount of crime that we have in this country right now, you would call Abokoko. Yeah. The people, come The people who have a calling, Abatwasile in our language. You would call them and say, what's going on? Why do we have such levels of inhumanity amongst our people? But most of all, there's an important person you would call. Because in all African kingdoms, the head was a woman. <laughs> called Indo, the she elephant. Now you had a king and you had a she elephant in Dovgat. If you look at the pictures of Eswatini, because they are the only surviving a monarch in Africa. 
you will see that her photo is above the one of the team because she is in charge of this we call msamo she's in charge of the national msamo or national altar mm. he is in charge of public affairs but who holds the kingdom the one who has who is in charge of public affairs or the one who is in charge of the spirit world obviously the one who is in charge of the spirit world so when things were not working like they are not working in our society now they would call Abolirat or the people of Atwasile, but they would call her and say, when you interact in Samo, when you pray at your altar, what do you see? Because we have this problem that's not going away. What has happened to our society? Now we've been remade. Today, people go and pray. Oh, the answer still doesn't come. And then we make stories up for God, Tokozani, and we say, oh no uh, it is the will of god that that should happen and i often wonder did god write them a letter did he send them a message on their phone did he tell them this is my will two systems that are not the same now i think another big thing for spirituality is we never know the gender of what is called the originator but we don't have a god we have an originator now we never know the gender because we don't have gender grammar as africans that's why when Africans speak, they say, Tom, she left. Yeah. And people laugh and I say, why are you laughing? It's in their DNA. We don't have gender, uh, gender grammar. We don't have him, she, yeah. his hair. We don't have that. That was taught by us, by oh. European languages. We don't have that in our languages because we are not gender demarcated. We are more age demarcated. That's why a child was a child. And when you become a teenager or adulthood, you have an initiation to show you stop being a child. Every stage had its own initiation because we were more age maturing people. Gender was just but a happening. It was not an issue for us. So we need to unplug African men. This thing called patriarchy, you were taught it by the Bible. See in the Bible, God is a male. Jesus is a man. The angels are males. The first disciples were men. The Catholic Church to date still doesn't allow women priests. So Christianity is rooted in patriarchy. But Christianity comes from Judaism, which also on its own is rooted in patriarchy. Then it gives birth to Islam, and it becomes more stratified. I like this because when you copy what's not yours, you become worse than the owner. Taranko. So yes, it, it's the law of nature. You know, Judaism gave birth to... Judaism, yes, patriarchal, not that much, gave birth to Christianity stratified patriarch gave birth to islam that's like from the frying pan into the fire even worse <laughs> stratified now i'm glad it stopped because if islam had to give birth to another maybe it did because the system of isis is an offshoot of islam it is it's even worse than islam itself by the way that's that's why people got a shock when they got to the islamic state they see an advert on 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 their computers they say come we are building a muslim state you go there as a nurse and you rock up there and they tell you, oh no, women don't work here. With your nursing degree, you're going to be serving the men. Mm. So it means Islam has given birth to something worse than itself. Mm. So this thing called patriarchy, Africans, it's not yours. I don't know about white people, but can I tell you, I'm a Litchfield. So on my paternal side, I'm Litchfield, fourth generation of some men who came from Southampton, was part of the British colonial forces in Eswatini, today Swaziland decided to marry an African woman was uh, disowned by his family, uh, cashiered out of the uh, Royal Army, uh, and he stayed with this woman, had 14 kids, 13 or 14, one of them is my grandfather. Now I can tell you, because of that, and I'm a spiritual person, I'm more interested not just in African spirituality, but in your spiritualities too, Europeans who are here. And I'm amazed if I look at the cells, and I look at the position of women, that was much better than what Christianity came and sold you, by the way, even as Europeans. Mm -hmm. When you were in spiritualities, you thrived better as genders than you came to thrive when you embraced the religion and you became religious people. Mm -hmm. So the issue of gender then, I think for me, is what we need to unplug in a manner that understands that you can't separate gender, religion, and capitalism. They go together. Mm. Capitalism, once you divide it, and it starts in the household with male and female, 
it then comes to sexual orientation. I have never seen an economic system that even wants to tell you who to sleep with. It's absurd. Capitalism comes to even tell you if it's not heterosexual, it's wrong. It's only now that they warmed up because the movement was rising in the 70s and the LGBTQ was fighting back. But capitalism and Christianity will even tell you who to kiss. Who is it legally to kiss? Who does God want you to kiss? That's how they even put it. Who has God ordered for you to have sex with? Now they go further. They first do male, female. They do sexual orientation. They do race. They do... It's just, it is amazing to me how we continue to hold on to capitalism and defend it, but this system is eating us right under our feet and coming up with the body, you know, just like that. It's a system that plunged the world into such hatred. It's, it's, it's amazing, actually. If you look at the history of capitalism, you see nothing but deprivation, war, division, amassing of wealth. I asked people who came to present at a conference I was at of mining communities, Anglo-American was there to present Lerato. And I said to this guy, can you tell me why you are still mining diamonds and gold? Just tell me, give me one reason. Because it's not for sale, it's for stockpiling now, I hope you are aware. It's not for sale, now they're stockpiling, and the stockpile itself, the stockpile upon the stockpile. That's greed at another level. That is unexplainable. You are displacing communities, desecrating their graves, making sure that there's no compensation because there hardly is compensation. From where people are moved to, to where they are taken to, their loss is uncountable. You move them from arable land because you want to mine to land that is not arable. But also the gaping holes that you leave behind. Look at Gauteng. Do yourselves a favor. Go to Google and say pictorial view of gaping holes left by mining in Gauteng, you'll get a shock of your lives. That's what mining does. For stockpiling, not even for sale, for putting away, to make you feel better when you go to bed, that now my stockpile is at this amount. That's greed. That's inhumanity at a level that I cannot explain. In the rat. What else do we need to unplug? I think in this evening of storytelling that is unplugged. Mm. I think we need to unplug the notion that a continent is going to fight. In South Africa, we call it white monopoly capital. Uh, in the NGO space where I am, we call it transnational corporations. If you think a continent alone or a country alone is going to take these guys on, you are joking. You need unity of the world. So goes. Uh, for us to achieve multilateralism and kill this system, there's going to be working together, not of the global south, as it's being called. South to south, not going to take these people on. Oh, BRICS is trying, by the way. I think they're getting somewhere. I actually congratulate them for even including the other six countries they've included. They're getting somewhere, but you're still going to need the collaboration, especially at citizen level. You are going to need the collaboration amongst Africa, amongst Asia, amongst the Americas, amongst Europe of people because this system by the way it eats what it can eat in case you're not aware see when it was favorable to the system it ate africans through slavery and colonialism when it was no longer and oh you europe was living okay at that time that's why if you look at the 19th century mm, very few protests 20th ah towards the end now you start seeing europeans protest and people are even saying Europeans can protest, we didn't know, because capitalism now cannot eat Africans, so it eats what it can eat. Capitalism is a monster, guys. It will feed itself with, with, with whatever. Well, at first it will feed itself with what is not its kind, like it did. Now it's, it's eating its own children. That's why the American dream is dead. That's why Trump could actually write. When Trump said, America first, people could listen, because they're just tired of being abused by companies that other than American. That's the order of capitalism. That's why we call it imperialism. So I'm hoping that for people who are non-African, fully being here tonight, you are taking away for yourself what you can do as your part at individual level to achieve this thing we call multilateralism. We shouldn't just be having 
a particular government. I mean, we can't have America, guys, a single country that has been at war since 1946. One year after the end of the First World War, America has been invading and attacking countries at will. And the ICC has never called for George Bush to be criminalized. He attacked a whole country based on a lie. Weapons of mass destruction that never existed. And today they are telling us arrest Putin. And I'm just like, it must be nice to have power and money. You can just decide, today I'm red. And tomorrow you call that same red. No, I've decided today it's blue. It's no longer red. And everybody must listen. So I think we need to unplug from this unity. We just realize that the system that is out there cares only for itself. It cares for money and those who have money. So if you have money, you don't die early. You actually live long. Because if you have money and the treatment is not in your country, you can fly to Australia and get it. In fact, you go on Google and you say best place to cure cancer. And you take the next plane and you go there. If you don't have money, they tell you, oh, sorry, you need an operation, but you need to wait for 10 months before this operation. And you have no choice. You will wait for 10 months. That's the system under which we live. It's inhuman. It's stratified. And religion is used as a tool and an instrument. It defies logic to me. Why is Africa Day not a public holiday in African countries? Okay, I know for a whole lot of things we blame colonialism, but can we blame colonialism for that, Togozan? Why is Africa Day an ordinary day, but Easter is the holiday? Excuse me, the people who are here, I just speak like my, I have a Gen Z. A daughter, so hey, yeah, they corrupt your language. So, <laughs> Easter, guys, a rabbit gave birth to eggs, it's <laughs> fucked up right there, and it's a public holiday. But Africa Day, the day you have a history of, you know, that's when we fought for liberation, it's not a public holiday. Tells you right there where our bread is buttered. Putin didn't come to South Africa because pressure was put on us to arrest him. I've never seen anybody call for George Bush's arrest. Oh, Americans tried, they were silent. And we didn't even join that cry for them. We just looked as they were calling and being silent. Um, unplug from what again? Can we talk about language? This storytelling is so immensely difficult for me today because while I am very fluent, I think the Richfield genes just kicked in because all eight of us, we are very fluent in English. Extremely. I mean, I think I dream in English. But fortunately, I know our African languages too. My dad was very smart. We are these colors that lived in African areas and grew up as Africans. Now, this storytelling is hard for me because storytelling, storytelling by its nature is an African thing. So I'm supposed to be doing this in an African language. But to be sensitive to the people who don't understand it, I have to switch to English. But it's, it's like it's not connecting. It's just so superficial. Something is missing. So can we talk about language? Language for Africans is not just something used to communicate. Language connects me here. If I say incense, it's not the same thing as I say in Bebo. Doesn't doesn't resonate no the same not. way in my mind. It's two different things. They say ancestors. What is that? I mean, an ancestor is it's historical. You can say I'm the ninth generation of my ancestors. It's a generic way. But in my language, if I say Abapansi, it's not the same as ancestors. Because Abapansi connotes the people are alive. They are just not in this realm that you see. But they are alive. It's the people on whom I walk. That's the connotation. And we even have categories and classes. It's not just a, a ancestor. It means everything, isn't it? We have those we call Amatong, or the one who speaks to you through your dreams. Because Uptongo is to sleep in Guni languages here. You have um, no, no, those who died as babies, either aborted or stillborn or were killed. I mean, no, no, you have um, I mean, we have classes of ancestors. So when I say that in English and I say ancestors, mm. okay. Mm -hmm. it, it, yeah, it, I, I, I could as well just be in UCT in a lecture hall, but not in a storytelling space. 
um language is key i've pretty much resigned myself to saying whatever the west as in colonialists gave me for free whatever they gave me for free like you walk into every hotel room and there's a copy of the bible I always open the window and throw it out because you didn't ask me if I want it or not. You didn't contract with me. You are assuming I'm a Christian, which is very presumptuous of you, actually. Because it's your religion. Don't inflict it on me. So I never argue anymore. Me love the window and just throw it out. But see, I've pretty much said in unplugging for me now, whatever they give me for free, no value. Whatever they deny me, that's what I want. You know, they teach Marxism at Varsity. They don't teach Pan-Africanism at University. But they teach Marxism. It should tell you, while Marxism can bark, it can bite. That's why they will give it to you for free. Now, I think we need to start unplugging and saying, I should stop as an African, as a person, for those who are not African, to run after free things. In Soweto, that we even gave it a name, free bees are on one free thing. <laughs> why is it free? It's a capitalist system, so why is it free? Something is wrong with it. I don't want free things. So unplug from what the system gives you. Go after the things they deny you. Knowledge is one of them. Mm -hmm. It's amazing to me how we put so much money into soccer clubs. There's a scientist woman, I, don't, I, I never claimed her name, Lerato, but I love her so much, wherever she is, and it was a white European woman. I think they were looking for, before the vaccine came out, and this thing was hitting Italy, Spain, and it hit three countries. It was Italy, Spain, and China. Yeah, in Europe. It was Italy and Spain predominantly. So people were like, where's the vaccine? She said, you want the vaccine? Ask the soccer player. You pay them a million. How much do you pay me? Put your, uh, put your money where your bread is. It's, so it's amazing to me how we can freely give money in sport, in art, in millions, but not where it matters. We pay grade one teachers, primary school teachers, we pay them peanuts. But that's where the foundation is. How is it possible that a primary school teacher earns up to a hundred times less than what a soccer player makes in a month? The soccer player only edifies himself and his family and a few places where he does charity, if he even does charity. It's not mandatory for him to do charity. But that primary school teacher is empowering and raising a nation. So we really need to unplug and start looking at the matrix and how this system is designed to destroy us all alike, pink, red, yellow, black, because the people who benefit truly, we call them the one percenters, are sitting there. Oh, and they are very happy to have made you believe that we are monkeys and to have made us believe that you guys are nothing but racist pigs. It's very happy for us to think like that. But all the way, that one percenter is making money from both groups. You know, in the Second World War, 50 million people died. Have we ever stopped to think who funded that war? Mm. Do you know the same banks funded the Allied forces? As in Britain, France, America, who else? Russia, then. And the Axis, which was Japan, Italy, and who else? They were three. It was Japan, Italy, and who else? They were three, though. The, the Rockefellers, those same banks, Rothschilds, they funded both groups. And then they want to turn around and ask you to demonize Hitler. Those bankers were Jews. Why didn't they demonize Hitler? They funded Hitler to kill Jews. Has it ever struck you? Unplug from this matrix, guys. Don't wake up and do what the system asks you to do. Jewish bankers funded Hitler to kill Jews. 50 million people died in that war. let that sink for you to understand the draconian system that we are dealing with scary stuff the catholic church sanctioned slavery of black people it's even in a paypal bull of 1680 whatever 
where the Pope called Spain and called Portugal and told them two Christian nations, better even, two Catholic nations cannot be fighting over barbarians because they were fighting for control in Africa. And the Pope demarcated the world for them to enslave. He told Spain, take South America, which is why Spain ended up with more colonies in South America, by the way. Portugal, take Africa. Oh, they were eating mucus. In my language, they sneeze, they lose them eating mucus. The Brits <laughs> and the French came and took Africa from them. But they were the first to come here, the Spanish and the French. Unplug from this system. It's not meant for your comfort or your growth or, or your togetherness or your brotherhood, all these good things that we think should be out there. This is not what this system was built for. What else do we need to unplug from? Unplug from the fact that you need education to know. No, I'm sorry. Mm. Education doesn't give you knowledge. Education gives you a certificate. Mm. There's a difference between being certificated and being knowledgeable. You can be knowledgeable without education. And you can have three PhDs and still have no knowledge. So when you want knowledge, go find it. And it's not on TV, by the way. Please don't make that mistake. Remember, BBC, CNN and company are the ones who convinced us all that there are weapons of mass destruction in Iraq. Mm -hmm. And they were never there. So don't make the news you watch every day your source of knowledge. Actually, I've gotten to a place where when they tell me something, I always say, okay, 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 I hear you. What are you not telling me? Because mm -hmm. there's always something they're not telling you. Find that thing. You live in a better world because you'll make better choices. And also just don't watch one TV station and run away with that thing like a blabbera and say the news, say no. Say CNN said so or Al Jazeera said so. Um, I'm, I'm at a position where it's, it's very intense for me to watch news because I start with our own, then I must go to, uh, it's a pity they jammed Russia down. That on its own should show you. Yeah, they're like Why have you jammed it down? You want to tell me about Russia from the mouth of an American. No, I want to hear about Russia from Russia. Because I hear about America from an American mouth, mm -hmm. isn't it? Fair. But anyway, I start with our own, then I have to watch Al Jazeera, then I have to watch CGTN, then I have to watch... I go through all of them and still have to sit down and say, okay, what's the truth I'm deciphering from this? Because most of them are just misinformation and disinformation services. Unplug from believing that what a journalist tells you is fact. How many lies, how many times have journalists lied to us about something? If the editor wills it, it goes. Whether it's the truth or not. But better still, if the funder wills it. Remember all these things need money. That's why we say it's a capitalist year. Whoever pays for it owns it. They say money talks and bullshit works. It works every day in the world. It works on TV. It works in the games kids play. It works. I'm amazed by how much violence is in cartoons. Parents don't parent. They say go watch the cartoons. I'm busy. Your child is learning about sex. Not taught by you. Not that they shouldn't learn, but you should be the one teaching them. They learn about sex, violence, witchcraft, all these things that you think they're not supposed to learn from. Or watch the cartoons, you'll see the building blocks. What else do we need to unplug from? Hmm. For African women, we need to unplug from a victim mentality. Yeah. You know how they count time? I say they. Because if I forget this, remind me in the end, ne, ne, oh. there's a fundamental difference between time and the clock. The two are not the same. So now they count time as before Christ. So those of us who are not Christian, we say before the common era, CE. And then they say Anna Domina, which is Latin for after Christ, we say common era, CE. Now, if you put the three races here, or, and there are only three, by the way, don't be confused because the rest are nations. Only three that you can clearly demarcate. It's the Mongoloid race, that's yellow people. 
Caucasian race, that's white people, Negroid race, that's black people, which is where the word Nika, whatever, whatever, so it came from. Mm. Now, if you put the three races here and you go to BCE time, you'll be amazed at the amount of public offices occupied by African women already in BCE time. And now Helen Zilla comes and tells us colonialism civilizing. And I'm just thinking, my God, what do they say she has? A master's? I don't know. I don't know what she has, but I know she's educated. A shiny example of how education can miseducate you or disinform you. Because colonialism came to reduce the African women to dust. Where we were the agriculturalists. Because in African spirituality, we believe the process of planting is the same process as giving birth. It's called procreation, which is why only African women could till the land. That's why even to date, subsistence farming in Africa is still largely in the hands of African women. They took away the commercial one from us. Now, you need to unplug African women from the powerlessness that we have allowed colonialism and religion to produce. Because, because we commanded agriculture, it means we commanded the market. We decided what can be eaten and what cannot be eaten. And because we commanded agriculture, we commanded healing. So we were the food providers. Food security depended on us, and healing depended on us, and we controlled the market. But because they also believe that we are procreators, even at the altar, it's African women that led. That's why in the church today in Africa, there's more women than men. We are still leading, but in the wrong way. We are in church. And but because we miss Umsamo in church, that's why we start doing things that are not done in church. We bump and roll. I call it bumping and rolling. African women roll, say all sorts of weird things, language they don't understand. Because they're in a wrong realm, they're supposed to be here. This is where their leadership place is. Now, unplug from the powerlessness of thinking you need a man to make it someone. No, on the contrary, a man needs you to make it someone. It's the other way around. Because of the power that was vested upon you. You know, there's a word I've never found in any European language. If there's a researcher in the audience here today, please come <laughs> talk to me, because maybe we should find it. It's called Inimba. Inimba is not tangible. Inimba speaks to something only a woman has because she has a womb. It's metaphysical. But you can write volumes on Inimba. Inimba is what gave rise to the slogan, a child is raised by a village. Because when I grew up, and my next door mother saw me do something and beat me up. When I came to report at home, they would beat me up too because they would say, it's a woman, she beat you up probably because you were wrong, so I'm repeating the beating. Inimba in is something unexplainable, but it has got so much power. That I, I, I think they call it a sixth sense, but it's such a weak. And also a sixth sense is not just for a woman. Inimba is strictly maternal in, in, in Africa. The inimba is what made you know to mix this and that to produce the rain. Because remember, rainmakers were predominantly women. Inimba is what you knew when I see this tree and this herb and I mix this, this will cure this. But inimba is what made us to be seers. What is called the sangoma. I'm sorry, Koko, but me, I don't go to a male sangoma even today because mm -hmm. I don't know if they are called or not. Because in the actual culture, only women can, can be Zango. Mm. Because women were seers. Because of Inimba, they could see into the future. They could see into the past. They could see into the underworld. That's why we have Isis in, in Kemen. That's why we have Ma'at. Now, men mm. were Inyanga. Inyanga Aitwasi. Inyanga does not need supernatural powers. Inyanga is just like a doctor in the Western world. You learn, it's a process, it can be seven years. You learn the head. Now, if only women could be Zangoma seers, it means there was so much power vested upon you that even the men knew that only you could throw the bones and see what cannot be seen and see into the metaphysical. Now you've reduced yourself to parcels of men. Now South African women, and it happens with us, black, colored, and African. 
people keep 10 men one is for the cell phone mm. one is for the grocery <laughs> one is for louis vuitton mm. one is for and i'm just thinking do you even understand how spiritual sex is mm. do you understand mm. that each time you lay down with somebody mm. you take a piece of them and you leave a piece yeah. of you there <clears throat> how do you do that mm. I don't know in other cultures, I think in Q&A, white women will enlighten you, even white men. But in our culture, sex was like a sacred thing, which is why it was insisted, have it when we are married, because you leave so much of you there. As a matter of fact, I've, I, ca I came to coin my own. That in every sexual activity an African man engages in, you leave some of your power there. Mm. Oh, yeah. Now, if you keep 10 at a time, that's why African women have become the drunkards of the nation. Mm. You know we drink more than men. Mm. Mm. You have to, to live with yourself. Mm. After all the powers you've given away, what's left in you? Mm. Mm. I don't know if we need more unplugging. How long have I talked for? Mm. You need more unplugging. Mm. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> <laughs>